We have Carrie has borrowed money interest free, which is very rare if you can ever borrow money interest free. Yes. But so she borrowed money interest free to pay for a car repair. She is repaying the loan in equal monthly payments. So here is a little table showing how much she borrowed. So she borrowed $840. How much are we going down by each month? So minus 120, is it 120 again? And then again? And then again? So then what kind of sequence do we have there if it's always going down by 120? Arithmetic. If it's a constant same amount each time, that means it's an arithmetic. So we're dealing with an arithmetic sequence here. So they want us to write an explicit rule for the sequence of loan balances using N and F of N. So it's telling us to use function notation. So then since it's arithmetic, that means I'm going to use the arithmetic formula it gave us to do explicit form. Remember, explicit means you can find any position of the sequence that you want. What are we going to plug in for a sub 1? 840. The value of d is what? Negative 120. And then I'm going to leave it as n minus 1. Because again, we're just writing a generic explicit formula. So go ahead, distribute your negative 120. Combine your like terms. Let's see what we get. Hopefully we got negative 120n plus 960. Okay. So how many months will it take for Carrie to pay off the loan? So we're looking for her to pay off the loan. How do we solve that algebraically? Set it equal to zero. So zero equals negative 120n plus our 960. So I subtract my 960 over to try to get n by itself. Divide by negative 120, and what do we get? Eight. So it's going to take her eight months. That's when her balance is zero. We had to explain, so that's why we had to write a little bit of a sentence there. Explain always means sentence. So then see how much did she actually borrow? 960. How do we know it was 960? So that's when x is a zero, which means it's the beginning of the problem. In this case, since it is a word problem, the beginning is when your time is a zero. So you're still going to be looking for that value there at the beginning of time for that situation. Not like beginning of time in general, because that's like, no. So again, figure out what kind of sequence you're dealing with, use that formula, answer the questions that go along with it. So let's look at our second one. Suppose you drop a bouncy handball from a height of 10 feet. After the ball hits the floor, it rebounds to 90% of its previous height. About how high will the ball bounce after its fifth bounce? So again, we drop it from 10 feet, so that's why right here at zero, I have 10 because it started at 10 feet, and then it bounces once. So 10 times 90% gives us what? 9. So after it bounces once, it only goes up 9 feet. So now 9 times 90%.
0.1. So it bounces up 8.1 after the second one, and then times 90% again. And then times 90% again. And then one more time. So after its fifth bounce, it'll be bouncing up 5.9049 feet. Which means that's probably a really super bouncy ball still. So part A, how is each term of the sequence related to the one that came before it? It's 90% of the previous height. So since it's 90% of the previous height, what kind of a sequence do we have here? Geometrics. Remember, geometric was like your exponentials. Exponentials always are the ones that dealt with your percentages. So we have a geometric sequence here. So on the coordinate grid below, sketch the path of the ball, bouncing ball to the correct height. If you connect the maximum points, what type of graph does it become? So at drop zero, it starts there at 10. And then on the first drop, It was at 9. After that second bounce, we got 8.1, So if we connect those, what type of a graph is it starting to look like? An exponential. It's starting to look like an exponential curve there. So write a recursive formula for the rebound height of the bouncy ball with the initial height of 10 feet. Now this one's a little bit different. Word problems are always a little bit different. Instead of starting with an a sub 1 equals, where does this problem actually start? Zero. So we're going to actually start with an a sub 0 equals 10. And that's going to happen for your word problems because your word problems start at a time of 0. They don't start at the first term like all of the other ones have so far. So then as we're writing the other part, what's happening to each of the previous terms? Getting multiplied by what? 0.90 and then a sub n minus 1. So when I'm trying to figure out the first term, I put a 1 in here, so that means it's 90% times term 0. Second term, 90% times term 1. So then they want us to write an explicit formula for the rebound height of the bouncy ball with the initial height of 10 feet. So again, this is our explicit formula that we are given on our reference sheet. Couple of changes to it though. Are we starting with a sub one this time? No. Since this is gonna go down to become a sub zero, that also changes the exponent to be just n. So since our first term went down 1 to 0, your exponent also goes down to just n. So our formula for this, our a sub 0 is 10. Our common ratio is 0.9 or 0.90. And then it's going to be to the n power. Because if I plug in a 1 to figure out my first term, I don't want my exponent to be subtracting down and becoming zero. I want it to stay as a one because it's my first rebound. And then I want it to stay as a two for my second rebound and three and four. So that's why that changes there. So 
So we have Carmela's annual salary and year N can be modeled by this recursive formula here. Let's take a look at our notation. This is a little bit different. N plus one, what does that represent? Next term. We didn't do too much with next term, but that's still next term. So therefore, if I'm at N plus one, that means N is N plus one's what term? Previous. So this is still recursive like we're used to. They're just changing it a little bit. N is the previous term to N plus one. And we're starting at 75,000. She has a initial annual salary of 75,000. That would be wonderful. So what does the number 1.05 represent in the context of this problem? The 1.05. So if you look, we're doing 1.05 times the previous year's salary. Increase of how much? 5% increase in salary. So each year she's getting a 5% increase. Mm -hmm. After it's increased. So she gets 75,000 times the 5% increase. So in the next year it's, yeah, that value moves on. Mm -hmm. All right, what does the number 75,000 remember and re represent in the context of this problem? Her starting salary. That's how much she makes first year. So now they want us to write an explicit formula for a sequence that represents Carmela's salary. So what kind of formula are we dealing with here? Are we dealing with arithmetic or geometric? Geometric, because we are multiplying by that 1.05. So that's a geometric. So our explicit form for our geometric is that one, a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. But again, do we start with an a sub 1 here? No, what do we start with? So this is going to be a sub 0, and our exponent then, remember, also goes down to just n. So if you start with an a sub 0, your exponent is just an n. So our a sub 0 is 75,000. The r value is 1.05, and then it will be to the n power. And there's our explicit formula for that one. So a pond currently has 2,000 trout in it. A fish hatchery decides to add an additional 20 trout each month. In addition, the trout population is growing by 3% per month. Write a recursively defined sequence that gives the population of trout after n months and use p sub 0 equals 2,000 to define your sequence. So, we were told to start with that. So p sub 0 equals 2,000, that is our starting point. Now is this one arithmetic or geometric? But there's also a percentage. So this is neither because it's adding and you're increasing by 3% each month. Because it's not both. It can't be both. So, no, we don't have to learn a new thing. We just have to think a little bit. So our 3% growth, that is going to happen first. So how would I show 3% growth with multiplication? 1.03, and it's times my previous month. Whatever was in there my previous month, I'm doing 1.03 times that. So 1.03 times a sub n minus 1, and then plus 20. 
because then you got the hatchery adding their 20 in there afterwards. So 3% growth, and then we're adding 20 in. So how many trout are in the pond at the end of the second month? I got to figure out the first month because it's recursive. Then I can figure out my second month. So my first month, so P sub 1 is going to be the 1.03 times my previous, which was 2,000, plus 20. So go ahead, type that in. 1.03 times 2,000 plus 20. Hmm? 2,080. I just noticed I put an A here when I should have put a P. I used P's over on that side, so that notation should also be a P. All right, so now for the second month, now that I have my first month, 1.03 times my 2080 from month one plus 20. Gives us how many? Well, can we have 0.4 of a trout? No. It's 2162. Can't have 0.1. So now we can figure out our third month, which is our next question. Just keep going with our recursive formula. What? Oh, yeah, you can't create that last portion of the trout, so it would round down. 46? Okay. And then it's 0.8 after that? Chromatic musical scale contains 13 notes. Yep. All the notes on a piano, both white and black keys, from one note to the one note an octave higher. Yeah. Yes. No, but the first. Yeah. So the frequencies of the notes form a geometric sequence. The 13th frequency is twice the first frequency. What is the common ratio of this sequence? So for this one, put 13 spaces. We got my first frequency and then my 13th one. So if I call this one, 1F, meaning one frequency. The 13th one is twice that. So I'll call that 2F, because i got to give it a variable, because I don't actually know what it is. I now can use my geometric formula there to be able to figure out what my common ratio is. So my a sub n turn, remember that's some term in the future, that's going to be my 13th one over there. So I'll call that one 2f. My first term is 1f. I'm looking for r. And then again, 2f was my 13th 
1. So 13 minus 1 is my exponent. Divide by 1f. It kind of looks like if, but 1f. F's cancel because it's just normal variable rules. It's just like if you had x divided by x, it would cancel each other out. So we just have a 2 here. So then how do I take it from r to the 12th and get it to be r to the 1st? Yes, reciprocal exponents. So 2 to the 1 12th power. Why? What'd you get? It shouldn't, shouldn't be that big of a number. Okay, 1.059? Yeah. Well, yeah, there's more decimals after that. We're around. All right, last page here. A couple more examples. So we have the product of the second and fifth term in a geometric sequence is 288. If the sixth term is 96, what is the first term of the sequence? So I'm going to put some spaces in here. No, 96 is the sixth oh. term, so I'm going 6. I also know that my second term and my fifth term, if I multiply them together, because that's what product tells us to do, is 288. But that doesn't really give me too much to go off of right yet. So how do I figure out each of my terms in a geometric sequence again? Multiplying. There we go. So if I wanted to go backwards, what would I do? Divide. So my fifth term would be my sixth term divided by r. My fourth term, I would divide by r again. So that means it would be r squared. And then r cubed, r to the fourth, and r to the fifth. All right. Okay, so my first term is 96 divided by r to the fifth, and my fifth term is 96 divided by r. So I'm going to use those two values to figure out what r is, because they said my first term, no, my second term. So that should be r to the fourth. I used the wrong one. Second term times my fifth term equals 288. So let's multiply our fractions over there on the left. What's 96 times 96? Yes. 92.16 over r to the fifth, because exponent rules. We would add those, 4 plus 1, r to the fifth. Cross multiply. So 288 r to the fifth equals 92.16. Divide by 288. And then what do we do now? Reciprocal of 1 fifth, which is the fifth root of 32, which would be 2. But now that's not actually our answer, though. I know a lot of work for this. We needed that to figure out the whole point of this. We need to figure out what is the first term of the sequence. That's what the question actually was. So the first term of the sequence is 96 divided by 2 to the fifth. 
So 96 divided by 32, which is? So our first term is 3. So example number 2 here, the sequence 64 blank 100 could be arithmetic. What would be the missing number if it were? So remember slope, first, second, third term. So we can do 100 minus 64 over 3 minus 1. So 100 minus 64 is 36 over 2. So our common difference is 18. So 64 plus 18. Missing term could potentially be 82 if it's an arithmetic sequence. So then 64 comma blank 100 could be geometric. So what would be the missing number if it were geometric? So I'm going to call this an X for now. We use the ratios for this one. The second term over the first term has to equal the third term over the second. Cross multiply, x squared equals 6,400. Square root of it, x equals plus or minus 80. So it could be positive 80 or it could be negative 80. So it could be positive 80. What else could it be? It could be negative 80. And then the last one here, suppose you have an arithmetic progression where the common difference is 3. If 1, 4, and 19 are added to the first, second, and third term respectively, the resulting numbers form a geometric sequence. Find the original numbers. So, for the arithmetic sequence, because the common difference is 3, our first number would be x. Our second number would be x plus 3. Our third number would be x plus 6. You just keep adding that 3 in there. For the geometric sequence, it tells us 1, 4, and 18 are added. So 1 is added to this one, 4 is added to that one and 19 is added to that third one. So our terms in the geometric sequence are x plus 1, x plus 7, and x plus 25. So what could we do using that geometric sequence to find the value of x? Set up to cross multiply like we just did in the last one. Second term over the first term equals the third term over the second term. So I'll give you a few minutes. Go ahead, cross multiply, try to solve that. So you should end up with x equaling 2. So then the question again, they wanted to find the original number. So if x is 2, we got a sequence of 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 3 is 8. So the original numbers are the numbers from the arithmetic sequence, so 2, 5, and 8. 